Hey guys, welcome back. Ashley D. Will here, author, teacher, life coach. Today we're going to look at a wonderful topic and it's called Partake of the Divine Nature. We're going to look at 2 Peter 1 verses 2 through 4. I do want to mention that in my book, My Journey Through the Cross, which is here, I have uh, talked about this topic and about the new nature and it's on page 99 in the chapter called Face to Face, where I have a face to face encounter with the Lord, page 173, where I talk about the hidden me, and on page 256, where I talk about being clean in Christ. Okay, so we're talking about partaking of the divine nature. All right, so let me just read you this passage, and then we're going to talk about partaking. So, verse 2, and in verse 2, I recently did a video on God's peace, part 1 and 2, and we really unpacked this here. So, if you want to reference that, you're welcome to. So, verse 2 is, May grace, God's favor and peace, which is perfect well-being, all necessary good, all spiritual prosperity, and freedom from fears, agitating passions, and moral conflicts, be multiplied to you in the full, personal, precise, and correct knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Verse 3, For His divine power has bestowed on us all things that are requisite and suited to life and godliness through the full, personal knowledge of Him who called us by and to His own glory and excellence or virtue. Verse 4, by means of these, he has bestowed on us his precious and exceedingly great promises, so that through them you may escape by flight from the moral decay, rottenness, and corruption that is in the world because of covetousness, lust, and greed, and become sharers or partakers of the divine nature. So that is the passage we're going to look at today, and I want to talk about the word partake for a minute before we start. Okay, so what does partake mean? We're talking about the word partake. So what one definition could be to join in. If you are at a party and it is a dinner party and everyone has arrived and everyone has been visiting with each other and talking and finally the host invites everyone to sit down at the table that she's prepared and everyone has sat down but you're still over against the wall and you have not joined in to the activity, the dinner. You are still over maybe in the corner or hanging out in another part of the room. Maybe you're shy. Maybe you're afraid. But you have not joined in. And so the host or the hostess may say, hey, come and join us in this dinner party that I've prepared. I've invited you. You're here. Come and join us. That is what partaking is. And many of you are not partaking as the scripture tells us to. You are not partaking. You're not joining in to the gifts and the inheritance and all of these wonderful blessings and promises that God has bestowed upon us as his children. So the Lord is saying he wants you to partake or come on and join in to what he is doing. He is saying, believe and receive the reality that I have purchased for you. I lived the perfect life. I died the perfect death for you. It was all for you. I was buried in the perfect burial for you, and I was raised in the perfect resurrection for you. Believe and receive this reality that I have purchased with you in mind, it's for you, and I'm telling you to join in. I'm telling you and inviting you to partake 
of what I have done for you and what I have bestowed upon you. Okay? So the Lord is saying twofold. Put on the beautiful garments that I have purchased for you. I purchased them through a lot of suffering and they are beautiful and clean and I have purchased them 100%. They have your name on them and they're for you and I want you to put them on. Secondly, he's saying, come, stop leaning against the wall or hiding behind the plant and come to this dinner party that I've invited you to. Come and sit down, resting in Christ and his ascension, seated at the right hand of the Father. Come sit down and enjoy this fabulous banquet that I've purchased for you. He did it all with you in mind. And so it makes a whole lot of sense to come put on the garments he's purchased for you and come and sit down at the banqueting table that he has prepared for you. So let's look at the verses here, this passage. So it says, may grace is the first thing and peace. So the scripture is going to define what those are. Those are kind of ethereal. They're kind of amorphous, aren't they? So the scripture is going to tell us exactly what they mean in the passage. May grace, that means God's favor, which you already have if you're in Jesus Christ, if you've been born again and you are part of the family of God. May grace and peace. What is peace? It is perfect well-being, all necessary good, all spiritual prosperity, and freedom from fears, agitating passions, and moral conflicts. May all of those be multiplied to you in the full, personal, precise, and correct knowledge. This is experiential knowledge. This is not head knowledge. It's not Anything like that is experiential knowledge. It is testimonies of the Lord through this knowledge of God and of the Lord Jesus. And then verse 3, for his divine power and only his divine power, that is telling us that we had nothing to do with it. It's not our power. It's his divine power has, this is past tense, already happened, bestowed on us all things. How many things? 20% of the things we need, 50%, 75%, 90%, 95%, 99%, 99.999. No, all things. That means 100%. It means more than enough. His divine power has bestowed on us, the believers, all things that are requisite. That means the things that are required and suited. That means everything that's appropriate and necessary and required to life and godliness. In this life, in these bodies right now, his divine power has bestowed on us everything that is requisite and suited to life and godliness through the full and personal, here's that word again, knowledge. This is again experiential knowledge of him, the Lord Jesus Christ, who did what? Called us by his own glory and excellence and to his own glory and excellence. So, by standing in, being one with his own glory and excellence, he called us and he's calling us to it. That means that we haven't come to it yet. So he's calling us to his glory and his excellence. And here, this word to is implying that we need to step up by faith 
to his glory and his excellence. He is giving, he's sharing these things with us. He has descended to earth. And so he has met us where we are, but we have to step forward, maybe up one step of a measure by faith and meet him. That means believing. That means receiving what he has done. We're going to step up by the faith that he has given us. This is nothing that we drum up in ourselves. He has already given it to us. And so then verse 4 says, By means of these, he has, again, past tense, bestowed, that means given graciously, on us his precious and exceedingly great promises. What are some of those promises? I'll give you two. 2 Corinthians 5.17 If any man is in Christ, he is a new creation, a new nature. He is born again. He is made brand new. That is a promise. And Colossians 2.11 When you were born again, and transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light and brought into the family of God, there was a spiritual circumcision that took place with you. Did you know that? It really happened. You had no idea, but it happened, and the scripture is telling you that it happened. So it's your job to believe it and receive it. And that spiritual circumcision, what did that involve? It involved the complete Spiritual circumcision of removing in totality your old nature, removing your sin nature and all the sins that go with it and discarding it. That is what happened when you were born again. So by means of these, he has bestowed on us his precious and exceedingly great, not just great, but exceedingly great. They're so great. They're too good to be true that they're hard to believe, but that is the God that we serve. Most people don't know him very well, if at all, but he's showing us and telling us how great of a God he is. He is exceedingly great because he gives exceedingly great things, and some of those are his promises. These are just two. Exceedingly great promises so that, this is why he's doing it, through them... Through believing and receiving and walking in these promises, what will happen? What is a byproduct of these promises? What is the fruit of these promises that he's given us? That we, all of us, may escape, hello, by flight, from the moral decay, the rottenness, yuck. And the corruption, yuck, that is in the world. In the world because of what? Covetousness, yuck, lust and greed. And so we've escaped the corruption in the world through his exceedingly great promises and what else will be the fruit of believing and receiving these exceedingly great promises? We will become sharers or partakers of the divine nature. This is the new nature. This is the born again nature. This is the supernatural new creation in Christ. See, all of this is leading up to being a partaker of the divine nature. And this passage is telling us how to join in. How to join in and come to the table and enjoy. It's giving us a detailed map of how to partake of the divine nature, how to join in 
with the Lord and say, yes, I believe you. I receive it. I am the new nature. You have made me the new nature you say you have, and I'm going to choose to believe you. I'm going to believe and receive the reality that you have purchased for me. That is what I'm going to do. So that's what the Lord wants us to do, is to partake of the divine nature. So some notes that I got from him, the Lord is basically telling us to get into what he has done for us. Get into it. Not to just sit reading the scriptures, not to just think about them or analyze them, but to get up and participate in them. If the Lord had bought you an outfit that you were to wear, he would be saying, heaven is your new home now because of what I've done for you. So put this heavenly outfit on. This is your appropriate attire now. Wear it every day. Get used to it. Wear it until it becomes second nature. This is what I want from you. I created you and have purchased you back and I'm the only one who can tell you who you are and what you are to wear. That's what the Lord is saying. Partaking means to receive the reality that I have purchased for you and wear the outfit that I have bought for you. Receive it, believe it, and wear it. It means also to eat and drink from the buffet I have prepared for you, the beautiful banquet. Participate means to enter in with Christ, to believe him, to believe his word, and to agree with him. Put on the beautiful clothes, the new nature, the divine nature that I've bought for you. Come sit down and enjoy this banquet that I've prepared for you. I am, the Lord says, a supernatural God. Stop trying to put me in a human-sized box. That's why you're timid. That's why you're frustrated. You're being mocked because of your unbelief. I've stepped down supernaturally to rescue you. Now you must step up with the faith I've provided you to believe what I've done for you. You believing me pleases me very much, he says, Hebrews 11:6. Believe that I am a supernatural God who has done supernatural things in you, cleansed and forgiven you while you were dead, raised you from the dead in resurrection life, and made you the new nature with a new heart and a new spirit, removed your sin, flesh, and depravity in totality, and I accept you 24-7 regardless of your struggles, feelings, or circumstances because of that. I am the God of the impossible, and I have done the impossible. Will you step out with the faith I've given you and believe me? Will you live as the new creation? Will you live believing that you have a new heart, my heart? Will you live walking in a new spirit? my spirit? If you struggle, will you believe that I have removed your sins and then stop counting them against yourself? Will you give them to me and forget them already? When you hold on to sin and keep bringing them up to me, you're telling me that I have not done what I have done. That doesn't please me. When you keep bringing up sins to me, you block, grieve, and quench the Holy Spirit who is wanting to sweep throughout your life to heal you and rid you of the remnants of sin. Receive my grace instead. My grace is so powerful and so mighty that nothing can stand in its wake. No sin could and ever will be able to stand in the way of my grace. My grace overcomes all. Let it be your secret weapon in private with me in your personal relationships, and in public. Humble yourself. Stop performing for me. I don't need your performance. Mine was more than enough for every human who will have ever lived. 
walk with me, trust me, and believe that I have your back and that I am on your side. That is what the Lord is saying today about partaking of the new nature. So understand that when you don't believe the scriptures and you don't receive them and you don't partake as the Lord wants us to, you're blocking, grieving, and quenching the Holy Spirit. Remember, too, that the Lord is the Spirit. Some people say, yes, I love the Lord, but we limit the Holy Spirit. Well, you're limiting the Lord because the Lord is the Spirit. You're also quenching and grieving the Lord very deeply. So when you will not believe and receive and partake in letting the Holy Spirit fill up every place, if this is your life, you are not letting the Holy Spirit take up all the area. You're not getting out of the way and letting him be the God that he says he is. Then what are you doing? It's idolatry. Because when you limit the Holy Spirit, if this is your life, and you say, well, Holy Spirit, you can have this little corner over here. But all this other area, I'm going to be in control. Guess what? The Holy Spirit is not over here. There's another spirit that is there, and you are worshiping that spirit. And 80% of the time, it's a Jezebel spirit. Jezebel spirit is taking over the whole world. And the Jezebel spirit is in the churches big time. So do you want to worship the devil by harboring this evil, disgusting, repulsive spirit? When you limit the Holy Spirit, you're keeping room and entertaining another spirit, and that is worshiping the devil. The Jezebel spirit is the enemy of the Holy Spirit. The Jezebel spirit masquerades as the Holy Spirit. FYI, this is going on in people's hearts. It's going on in families. It's going on in churches. So just know that when you refuse this or you're afraid of this or you're timid or you have unbelief about this, this is what you're doing. And the Lord is not pleased at all with that. So my encouragement to you is to renounce these evil spirits Send them back to hell where they belong and bow before the Lord in humility. Tell him you're sorry for entertaining evil and for worshiping the devil, that you've been deceived, that you're mistaken, and that you're coming to him with your whole heart to receive all of him so that he can run your life and fill up every area of your life so that there won't be room for any other spirits, evil spirits. And read these passages, especially three and four, over and over again, and ask him to enlighten your mind and to enlighten your heart and to show you what you need to see, show you what is missing in your heart. And let him do that so that you'll be able to join in and partake of this divine power and this divine nature that he has given to us in the beloved. That is my desire for you and that is my prayer for you. So I pray in Jesus' name that you will do that. I pray that God's will be done in your life. I pray you will not resist or hide or anything else anymore, that you will stop that and come out of that, step out of it and leave it behind. It's worthless and you're storing up wood, hay, and stubble when you stay there. The Lord wants you to store up jewels and all the precious treasure that is offered in the scriptures when we believe and receive them. You guys remember to like, subscribe, and share. And you guys have a blessed day, and I'll see you in the next video.